Simply put, CART is a tree-based predictive model uh, that makes predictions by splitting on features. We will use this term uh, feature to stay consistent with uh, part one of the machine learning uh, lesson. As a recap, a feature is what a model uses to actually generate a prediction. Other commonly used terms uh, include independent variables or predictors. So what exactly is a split? A split is nothing but an if-else statement. It's a logical rule that allows us to narrow down to a smaller part of the feature space. So let's look at a synthetic example below. Here, we begin uh, with 100 data points, and one of the features is age. The split here examines whether the person of interest is 18 years or older. If so, then we move to the left node, and a node here is also a technical term used when we talk about cards. But otherwise, we move to the right node. You can see that by splitting on age, uh, each node now has a smaller portion of the data set. On the left, we have 70%. On the right, we have 30%. If you were to continue in this fashion, splitting on other features along the way, then we will eventually develop a bigger tree and reach what we call a leaf of the tree. Now, a leaf may contain a single data point, five data points or 10, or really whatever you define. So the definition of the leaf is up to us, and depending on our choice, the performance of CART will vary. So clearly, we would like to make a choice that maximizes performance. Now, this is formally called hyperparameter tuning, uh, which we will talk more about uh, in greater detail later on. The running uh, data set we will use throughout this lesson is called the Pima Indians data set, uh, diabetes data set. The goal of our task with this data set is to classify whether or not a patient has diabetes. Uh, now, because there are only two choices, this is uh, called a binary classification task. So some background info on this data set. Uh, the data set is a collection of females who are 20 years or older of the Pima Indians heritage. Um, and this data set um, contains the following features that we can use for prediction. So first we have a set of medical features such as glucose concentration, uh, blood pressure, skin thickness, et cetera. We have the age of the person, body mass index, and so on. In the end, we have eight features in total. So let's visualize the classification task a bit more intuitively. Suppose a person has the following values for each of the eight features. Uh, we will feed uh, this information to the machine learning model, which then outputs its best guess at, at whether or not the person is diabetic. Of course, uh, the machine learning model uh, in this lesson, we will consider a CURT model. As with any data set, uh, it's a good idea to first do some basic uh, explanatory data analysis, or EDA for short. So let's import uh, the data using the read.csv function in R. <clears throat> this is the first line of code. And then in the second line of code, we will give more intuitive names for our features. Now, one of the quickest uh, ways to get a sense of the data set, including uh, whether we have missing data or how much of the data is missing, we can run the following code, which computes uh, various statistics about each feature. Now, the code outputs a table like this. Uh, immediately, we can make some useful observations. First, on the left, uh, we have the eight features of the data set. The first column with the title N uh, tells us that there are 768 data points or people in this data set. The second column with the title NA, it tells us that there are no missing data in any of the features, which is great. So this is already a clean data set and that saves a lot of work for us. In the bottom row uh, of this table, the variable outcome is the response variable that we will try to predict correctly. Uh, I will use the term response variable to again stay consistent with part one of the machine learning uh, lesson. But as a recap, other commonly used terms include uh, target variable or dependent variable. Now looking across uh, the bottom row, we notice that the mean is uh, 0.35. Now because outcome is a binary variable, the mean in fact tells us uh, the percentage of the data points that is of class one, meaning the percentage of the people in our data set who are diabetic. Class zero means non-diabetic. If the mean were 0 0.5 exactly, uh, this suggests that the data set is perfectly balanced and beca uh, because there is a one-to-one -one ratio between the two classes. Our data set isn't too bad in terms of the balance, but still we can see that there is a slight imbalance in favor of class zero. Now let's look at the correlation between each of the eight features and the response variable. From this bar plot, we note that glucose concentration is the most correlated feature with the response variable with a value of 0 0.54. In other words, higher glucose levels somehow seem to be correlated with the likelihood of having diabetes. Now, this is a quick and dirty way to get a sense of which features might be more important in our classification task. But we have to be careful. Correlation is not always an effective way to gauge variable importance, but in some cases it can be. As such a case is when there is a strong linear relationship between the features and the response variable. 
But if there is a strong nonlinear relationship, then this data analysis could potentially be misleading. Now let's try to fit a CART model. Uh, here is the code that partitions the original data set into the training and testing data sets. Note that although the function that does this is called the initial split, uh, the term split here has nothing to do uh, with splitting in the context of CARTs. So I'll just clear that potential misunderstanding right away. The argument prop in the function initial split uh, determines how large the training set is going to be. Here, we want to keep 80% of the data set uh, for training and the other 20% for testing. Now, in R, the CART model can be trained using the R part function. Uh, the syntax here di dictates that outcome is to be used as the response variable and all the rest as features. Using the method argument in the R part function, uh, we specified that this is a classification task. Now, the R part function will recognize automatically based on the fact that there are only two unique values in outcome that we want binary classification. In the last line, uh, we use the plot function to visualize the fitted CART model. So this is our CART model trained on the Pima Indians diabetes data set. In the very beginning, we split on uh, the variable or the feature glucose and divide the feature space into glucose smaller than 128 and glucose larger than or equal to 128. Now you will notice that each node has three numbers. Uh, from the top to the bottom, the first number is the predicted class within that node. For example, based only on glucose being 128 or higher, uh, our model prediction would be one, uh, meaning diabetic. The second number in the node is the predicted probability of having diabetes. Since the probability is only 0.59 uh, in this node, uh, we can tell that our model is not very strong at this point yet. And finally, the third number is the percentage of the data points at this node. When we continue some, uh, until the end, we reach uh, the leaves of the tree. The final prediction can then be made by placing a threshold on the probability. The default predict, uh, threshold is 0 0.5. This implies that if the predicted probability is uh, greater than uh, 0 0.5, uh, then all the data points within that node will be predicted as class one. Technically, this threshold uh, can be a, modeler, a modeler's choice too, but in this lesson, uh, we will not touch uh, this hyperparameter for simplicity. One of the advantages of a CART model is its ability to keep track of uh, how influential each feature was in classification. We call this variable importance. Uh, there's a useful function in R that can generate the variable importance uh, plot for us, which is what we are seeing on this slide. The intuition behind uh, variable importance in the context of CART is how much uh, splitting on a given feature uh, improves the resulting node's impurity, uh, which is then weighed by the percentage of the observations in that node. If the feature allowed us to create nodes which are pure, i.e. it allowed us to cleanly separate class one from class zero individuals, then that feature is considered important. Now, different measures of impurity can impact the ranking of the vari uh, variable importances, and we will talk more about these measures on a later slide. The units on variable importance are typically relative among the features instead of being absolute measures with a fixed unit. Now, as we already guessed from the correlation plot earlier, uh, this matches um, our initial intuition that glucose is the most uh, significant for making correct predictions. In general, it's a good strategy to be in touch uh, with these kinds of intuitions as you're doing machine learning to make a sense uh, of whether you're doing a correct job. So if something is counterintuitive, though, that could also be very uh, good since it might lead us to new and surprising insights. Let's try to understand a model's uh, performance. So in these plots, uh, the top left corner uh, tells us the number of class nine data points that we correctly predicted as class zero. In this case, 365 of them. So of course, the higher, the better in general. In the bottom left corner, uh, we have the number uh, of class one data points that we correctly predicted as class one. In this case, five, uh, 158. Binary, classific uh, binary accuracy is obtained by summing up these two numbers and dividing it by the total number of data points, which is 768. We can now compare the training and testing performances. The training binary accuracy is 83% uh, on the left, while the testing binary accuracy is 75% on the right. 83% is not bad, uh, not bad at all, but we note that the testing performance is much lower. Uh, sometimes this is unavoidable. We are obviously gonna do better on the data set that we were trained on. But when the gap is too large, uh, this is what we call overfitting. Uh, 